this is the Behringer RX1602. It's a line mixer. I bought it just over two years ago, so I think it's probably about time I made a video about it. I will explain what it is and what it does. I will tell you why I bought it and why I think it is a little bit unique. I will show you how I connect my gear to it. I will tell you how much I paid for it, how much it will cost you now. And of course, I will give you my overall impression and tell you what I think about it. If that sounds good. Let's get started. So to give it its full title, it is a Eurorack Pro RX 1602. And the one I have and the one which you would buy if you bought one now is version 2. Version 1 was released in 2003, I believe, but I can't find any difference between version 1 and version 2. Maybe they just updated some of the components. Functionally, they seem to be identical. So the first puzzling thing is why it has Eurorack in the name. It is not a Eurorack module. It is a standard 19 inch rack module. It will not fit into a Eurorack case. And as far as I can tell, it has absolutely no relation to anything to do with Eurorack. But to paraphrase Shakespeare, a line mixer by any other name. So that's just to avoid any possible confusion. If you don't have a Eurorack system, you may think, well, this is not for you. But no, it has nothing to do with Eurorack. So it's a line mixer. And these are typically little sub mixers, which are used to sum or bring together a lot of inputs into one output. And that's what this does. Most mixers are named according to the number of ins and outs they have. So this is a 1602, which suggests it has 16 inputs and two outputs. And so it does, but it doesn't work perhaps exactly as you might think. The 16 inputs are actually arranged into eight sets of stereo pairs. So essentially it's an eight channel stereo mixer. I'll talk about mono signals in just a second. You can see on the front that there are eight identical sets of controls, one for each stereo channel. Let's have a look at the other controls while we're here. To the right there are volume controls for the left and right channel. There is also a headphone input, which is very handy on the front of the unit, plus a headphone control. The controls on the back are very simple. Each channel has a left and right input, plus an operational level button, I never found the need to use this, but you might depend on your gear and your setup. On the right there are left and right stereo outputs, plus a monitor output. This output could be sent to, well, a set of monitors, I suppose. But it can also be used as an auxiliary send, if you want to connect the system to an external effects unit. However, the mixer does not have a return input, so you would have to use one of the input channels if you wanted to use it in that way. However, that does mean it reduces the eight stereo inputs to seven stereo inputs. But it's an option, so that's something you can do if you wish. Now, I did say you could use mono inputs on the RX, but they perhaps do not work exactly as you might expect. If you connect one mono input into each channel, I think you plug a mono input into the left channel, then it will work as a mono channel. You can pan the signal from left to right, alter the level and so on. And if you have a couple of mono sense, then that would work perfectly well. However, this is a stereo mixer, so you probably wouldn't want to plug eight mono sources into it. Now, if you plug a mono signal into the left channel and another different mono signal into the right channel of a single section, you will find that they are panned hard left and hard right. So you can't control the balance between the two of them. But what you could do is to record that output into your door and you would get a stereo signal. The left channel would be one synth, the right channel would be another. You could then split that in half and you would have two mono signals. So that might be another way to get even more out of the mixer if you have a couple of mono synths and don't want to waste any of the stereo channels. So why did I buy it? Well, you can probably guess, as I started to buy a few hardware synthesizers, I needed a way to connect these to my computer and my door. I had an audio interface, but that was only a two in, two out. So I needed a way to bring all the synths together. And this actually worked very well. As most synths, well, apart from monophonic synths, as they have stereo outputs, it was, of course, essential to have a mixer which could handle a stereo input. 
Now most, shall we say, standard mixes have a combination of mono and stereo inputs. And while I was researching standard mixers, I found I needed to get a really large mixer in order to get one with, shall we say, eight stereo channels. Of course, you can use two mono channels as a left and right stereo input for one synth, but that seems a bit clunky. And of course, it takes up two channels when in most cases you really just want the one. So the RX means I can connect up to eight stereo synthesizers to this one mixer. I can then connect the stereo output from the RX either directly into an audio interface or into my main mixer. Initially, I connected it directly to my audio interface, but as I got more gear and more bits and pieces, I found I needed even more inputs. So I got, um, shall we say, a standard mixer. It's also a Behringer. You can may be able to see glimpses of it through there I'm not going into that in this video so i connected the rx to the main mixer and that takes up one stereo channel on the main mixer so let's have a look at the main controls on each stereo channel i'm using this illustration from the manual because i think it's a lot clearer and easy to see what the controls are as i say each of the eight channels are identical so we have a monitor or monitor stroke effects send control if you are not using the monitor output or using it as an fx send then you would switch this to zero next is the pan control self-explanatory in most cases you would just leave this in the center position on the bottom left is a mute button and an led which lights when the channel is muted but it also doubles as a clip indicator if the input is being overdriven too high and then on the bottom right is a level control now, one thing to note is that these controls are stepped. They are not smooth turning knobs. They click a little as you turn them. Now, some people may not like this. If you've seen some of my other videos, you may recall that I have a degenerative eye condition and I actually cannot read the writing around these controls. So having controls which step makes it easier for me at least to set up the same levels and the same settings on each channel and adjust them from there. So personally, I like that and I find it very easy to use. If you want finer control, you can adjust the volume on each synthesizer. Normally, I tend to set volumes at around 8, assuming a range of 0 to 10. Now, this may be a leftover from some past traumatic audio experience, but sometimes on a lot of gear, if you turn it up to 10, you increase the noise floor if there's some background noise in the system. I find a setting of 8 is pretty loud. It gives a good signal and you can turn it up if you need to and also turn it down. So I think that's a good setting and it gives you a lot of control. Now, most of my synths, the stereo synths at any rate, are on this Jasper's keyboard stand behind me. To connect them to the RX, I actually have two eight-way looms. So now we need to talk about balanced and unbalanced connections. And I promise I am not going to baffle you with science. As you probably know, balanced connections are used to reduce any potential audio noise. Now the inputs on the RX are balanced, but the outputs on most synthesizers are unbalanced. The only synth I have, I think, which has balanced connections is the Korg Wave State. So I did a massive amount of research to see whether I should get balanced or unbalanced connections to see if it would make a difference or not. It can be confusing. In the end, I decided just to go with unbalanced connections because you can plug unbalanced connections into the RX without any trouble at all. So my looms are eight-way unbalanced connections. I can't actually remember where I got them from. They weren't terribly expensive, somewhere around the £25 mark, I think. And the cable run is around four metres. Now, whether these cables will introduce noise to your system, it is impossible to say. What I did gather from the copious amounts of information on the internet was that you really just have to try this and see. It depends on the individual equipment, the situation, the wiring in the studio, and whether there's a full moon or not. So I can only say that I've used unbalanced connections over a four meter run and I don't get any noise. And that is used in synths with unbalanced outputs and balanced outputs. Now I did say at the beginning that I thought the RX 1602 was a little bit unique in a couple of ways. 
And first of all, and this is sort of a positive negative, if you like, there's nothing fancy about it. If you are connecting synthesizers to an audio interface or a mixer, then I would think in most cases you just want the connection to go straight through. You don't want any EQs, you don't want any fancy controls. You just want a mixer which will mix the signals and give you a stereo output. And that is exactly what this does. And if it had a second unique feature, I would have to say it's simply the fact that it has eight stereo inputs. Other similar sort of line mixers don't seem to go up to eight. Now this is when I looked at line mixers two years ago. There may be other mixers on the market. But I would be surprised if you could find one at such a price. Now back in 2020 when I bought this, I paid 82 great british pounds for it and i got this from tome on this was before all the carry on with brexit and so on upset the apple cart a little bit and this was considerably cheaper than the competition so i was a little bit concerned shall we say however this has been up and running now for over two years and i have not had any problems with it at all basically each channel is set up to accommodate one of the synthesizers and i don't really need to touch the controls after that so having a look at Toman now, this is now at £115. That is quite a significant increase over a two-year period. So whether this is due to the global inflation situation, the increased price and shortage of components, the increased shipping costs, I don't know. Having said that, I would still buy this at £115 and I think it is still cheaper than the competition, which offers less stereo input channels. So that is basically what I think of the RX 1602. I think if you have a lot of hardware sensor audio sources that you would like to bring together, I think this is very good value. For me, it has worked very well indeed, and I don't have any complaints. If you've enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy these videos as well. Check them out. I will see you again very soon.